um wow okay so I legitimately am not sure how to review this because there's so much to unpack um oh fuck man um, so first of all, I'm going to state this for the record. This is going to be spoiler filled. All right. So what I'm assuming is that for those of you that do watch these videos, which I know is a small number, but you know, still, um, I'm going to assume that as I saw this on a Sunday, pretty much everybody I know has already seen it. So I don't think there's much I can say that is going to be, uh, spoiled. You've already seen it. You know. And furthermore, uh, quite frankly, just to talk about all the cool stuff, you got to talk about, you know, the cool stuff. Because otherwise, I mean, I'm not sure what, what I'm supposed to say. You know, as a, as a film critic, and I say that in quotations because I'm not paid for this. I'm not a professional. I just do this, you know, for the sheer fun of it. Um, you know, but the overall goal is to tell people to go see a movie or not to go see a movie. And, you know, quite frankly, everyone's going to fucking see this movie. So what do you want from me? You know, so I, I feel like it's the only things to really do about it. So first of all, if just in case you have been living under a rock and don't know um, or need the, uh, the review summed up for you, it's fucking awesome. Okay, it is, it, it is everything you would expect a Marvel film, a huge blow-up Marvel film to be. It is all of that and everything you expected, everything you didn't expect, and so much cool stuff. And, like, man, just everything about it is done perfectly. You know, everything. I mean, you have got to be... If you're Warner Brothers in D.C., you have got to be shitting your pants at all this. You know, not only does Marvel do it better, but every time they consistently raise the bar for you. You know, because what's, what's Justice League going to come back with? I mean, seriously. You know, it come... You know and come back with in a, in a, in any kind of timely manner. Cause the reason this movie works, the reason all these movies work is because they have built the world and built the universe. We know these characters. We love these characters. We want to see these characters, you know? So we care about their, their fate and about this thing that's been building up. And I think that that's one of the big things about this movie. Cause so many movies, build up, and they hype, and they hype, and they hype, and you know something's coming, you know something's coming, and then when you get there, it's a, it falls flat, and that is not the case here, the build up, the you know, for instance, they've been building up Thanos ever since Avengers, they've been building up the Infinity Stones since even before that, so you, the thing I went in with going is like, okay, They've been building up Thanos. Is he going to pay off? You know, and boy, howdy, does he pay off? Uh, Josh Brolin, Josh Brolin is clearly having a great time playing him. That's the thing with all the the, the villains in the uh, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I, like I said before, I hear a lot of people bitch about the villains, and they go, "Oh, the villains aren't aren't as good." It's like I, I disagree with that very strongly. And what I also feel is that the people playing the villains in these movies are clearly having just the time of their lives doing it. You know, Tom Hiddleston in uh, in the first Avengers, James Spader as Ultron, and here Josh Brolin as Thanos, they're clearly digging it and just having a blast. And that comes across really well. I mean, they do a really good job with Thanos. I think he's, he's more interesting than he is in the comics. Because in the comics, he was just, he's just a big grape man who you know, who is, you know, turned on by death, like literally, you know, literally turned on. He is trying to date death in the comics. And I'm not, for those of you who have never read a comic and don't know that, I'm not making that up. He is in love with the physical manifestation of death. 
And that's a weird thing to try to get across in a movie. So they gave him a much different backstory and a much different motivation. And I think for, for the movie adaptation, I think it works. I think it works really well. Um, yeah, he is clearly, he, he's everything they've built him up to be, the biggest threat and all that, and it's great. Um, but what's really great about this movie is what made the first Avengers so cool and I think what people were a little disappointed in in the second one is the first Avengers is, oh pardon me, is all about these folks from other movies all coming together and, and, and watching them interact off each other. You know, that was the hook of that film. And I think what people had a little bit of a harder time with, um, with Age of Ultron is that we already knew all the characters. So they, they threw War Machine in there for a little bit. They threw Anthony Mackie in there a little bit. But all in all, we'd already seen all these characters interact. So we didn't have that freshness. Well, here, not only do we have all those characters, but every other character from every other Marvel film except Ant-Man, you know, all join in. So getting Thor... Uh, hanging out with the Guardians of the Galaxy, getting to see the Black Panther, you know, uh, hang out with, you know, the guys from Avengers when he's not kicking their asses, um, seeing, um, you know, Star-Lord and Spider-Man and Tony Stark and Doctor Strange all together, you know, that's kind of what the appeal of this movie is, is watching all this, you know, watching literally this whole universe come together. And it does that in, a, in an incredibly great way. Um, I gotta talk about this though. I gotta talk about my favorite part of the movie. So this is a spoiler warning, flashing that up on the screen at you. So if you haven't seen the movie, you don't wanna, you don't wanna get spoiled. Um, two, two fun cameos in this film, which I, I completely dig. And you know, first of course is, you know, the Red Skull comes back for a cameo. You know, um, as a as some kind of mystical thing guarding one of the Infinity Stones, so that was cool. But I'm sorry, folks. Peter Mother Effing Dinklage as a giant dwarf is the most awesome thing ever. And it took me a little while to like to, to look like that. Is that it's fucking Peter Dinklage? And it's the best thing ever. Like, it was so hard not to... Every time he goes through, like, yay! And they cast him as a giant fucking dwarf. It's like, yes! Brilliant! Whoever came up with that, give them more money. <laughs> um, man, yeah. Um, and the, what, I, what I think is also really great about this film is again something that you only get when you you build up a universe and you take that time to nurture it and let it grow um and that is um you can end a movie this this is the the empire strikes back of the marvel movies meaning it it ends down the villain fucking wins and kills a ton of people. Now, some of that emotional impact is a little lost on someone like me, because again, I know the comics and the storyline this is very vaguely based on, and I know kind of what happened there, and also I know it's, it's a comic book movie, so you know death is not a huge deal, you know. Um, you know, you know. So for instance, you know, one of the again, spoiler warning. You know, the the only person, you know, they one of the people they kill is the Black Panther, and I'm sitting there going, yeah, right, <laughs> yeah, because his movie only made about a billion dollars and is like now the fourth highest grossing movie in, in of all time and the highest grossing Marvel film overall. Yeah, I'm sure they're going to kill him and leave him dead. Yes, sir. I am positive they're not going to do any sequels to that. <laughs> you know. So, anyway, so some of that emotional impact is a little lost because, you know, you you know, but at the same time, 
it, it was pretty harsh watching all these characters that you've come to love and the actors that you come to love in the part getting snuffed out. You know, and I, I applaud them, again, because they've got that out. Uh, you know, obviously, it's a comic book movie, again, so they've got that out so they can use it. Um, but you got to give it to them for just going balls to the wall and just going for it. I mean, that's, and, you know, that, I mean, you know, they're going to, you know, take the back step there towards the end, but, you know, whatever, the fact that they did it is pretty, is pretty awesome. Um, I don't know what else to say. I, I legitimately don't, because I'm trying to think, because normally when I have a film that I really liked and I saw, um, you know, when I do these reviews, I try to think, okay, let's pre present both sides of the argument. Let's present it and really, you know, show that maybe this movie's not perfect, something could have been done. I, I cannot process a problem with this movie. And I don't believe in things like that's a perfect movie. But I, I cannot process right now from all of what you got a flaw. The biggest one I could come up with is that it is it is long. You know, it's we're getting into Lord of the Rings territory here. And, you know, this, I mean, this is... The, the Infinity War is their Lord of the Rings. It is their epic... I don't want to say climax, but it's their epic closure to, the, to this first group. So, I mean, it... And, and, and epic is a word that is thrown around just so much. You know... It loses a lot of its a lot of its punch, but this film is bloody epic, you know. And I cannot. I find this a lot with these Marvel films. I find my reviews for them are very short because I, I can't really get into what the problems are. Everything about this movie works, clicks, and you know, even though yeah, it's long, but they use every inch of that time. You know, for instance, I felt for me, and I know I'm going to get hate mail for this, I always felt the Lord of the Rings movies were too bloody long. That they needed editing. They needed to be cut down. Um, I know hardcore fans of it love how long they are, and I heard, I know one guy who said, you know, he, you know, they, they bought the five-hour expanded editions and all that crap, you know. So, I often feel long movies meander a little bit and, you know, press about for a little while. And I don't really feel that with this one. It's two things that I really do did like, kind of last couple things I want to talk about. Um, I really like just in terms of I always talk about director choices, and I love how you know this this film in its end credit sequence. Because usually the end credits, they you know do this big you know this big deal of you know showing stuff off. You know all the Marvel films did that. Like uh, you know I'm thinking Age of Ultron when they're circ the camera circling around the sculpture of them fighting Ultron while it gives everybody's names. You know, they all have big credit sequences because you always leave with the, that, the villain defeated and everything great. You know, you're excited. This one chooses to, you know, because of the way it ends and because, you know, it ends on, on the down note, it ends with, you know, stark black background and white lettering. And it's so simple font. And I was just like, that's really cool because it is not like giving you a, hey, ho, it's like, nope, this is not good. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. Um, so, and, and the last thing I was talking about before the, for the camera cut off, kind of the last point I was making, um, one thing I really love about this movie, just dug and, you know, outside, like, two things I love the most. One, Peter Dinklage Dwarf. Two, uh, um, the end credit sequence. Because the end credit sequences, they're, they become the staple, we all expect them, we know they're coming. You know, we all sit through them, but the end credit sequences have not had that that punch for me in a in a long time. You know, they're there, they're fun. You kind of know the next movie that's coming up. You're like, ooh, yay! You know, because a lot of them, like uh, the one at the end of Doctor Strange, was just a scene from Thor. You know, Thor Ragnarok. The one at the end of Ant Man was just a scene from Civil War. You know, so. I really haven't had one of these that I've, you know, on the end credit sequences that I've looked at and gone, okay, yeah, pumped, let's do this, you know, in a, in a long time. Um, and this one did it, not, you know, not just because I'm pumped up for the sequel and I really want them to do the sequel right away, but because of 
who they tease. And if and anybody who doesn't know that thing that Nick Fury was hitting and the signal that he was sending out, that logo that popped up on the screen, that is for Captain Marvel. All right, Carol Danvers, who is one of my favorite Marvel characters. I love Carol Danvers. And I've been waiting for her movie for a long time. And I know they're still filming her solo picture, but I have been, you know, like, I've been waiting. And I was crossing my fingers because so I was like, is she going to be in this one? Because I haven't seen her name on anything. And the fact that that came up, it's like, yes, yes, Captain Marvel in the next one, yes. So, so yeah, I was very happy about, about that. Um, there's not much else to say. Not much else to go over. You've probably already seen the movie. If you haven't, you're going to see the movie. Um, I mean, I'm driving right past the movie theater right now. It is backed up. So, you know, not a, you know, not a lot really to go into. So I guess last thing to say, final grade for this one, I mean, it's not a surprise. It's an A+. Plus. It, it is, it's a Marvel movie, and it's a big Marvel film extravaganza. It is a blowout. It is... It's what the Avengers films should be. You know, it's what these things are when they are at the height of their game. They are big popcorn movies. Just so much. And damn if I don't love everything about it. So I, I love it. A lot to get my head around. Like maybe after I've had a few days to think about it, maybe I'll pick out some things I didn't like. But... Um, I don't. I don't think I will. I think. I, I think this one is a is a great one. Is it the best one they ever did? I don't know about that. But it's def. You know, it's it's a fucking Marvel movie. You know, it's what's you get exactly what's on the box. So uh, yeah. So I don't know what I'm what I'm going to see next week because I'm looking at the release schedule and I'm going there is nothing bloody out. So I don't know if I'm going to do a film next week. Depends on what I can find. I don't know. If not, maybe I'll do another editorial. Um, but we're getting down to the end of the end of the school year, which means I'm going to be heading back to Alaska pretty soon, which means these videos are going to be few and far between. Um, so I want to try to go out on a bang. So uh, we'll see what's out there. But until next time, drive safe, and I will see you at the movies.